Hello and thanks for joining us from our studios in Tel Aviv. Coming up in today's newscast, Israel prevents three terror attacks in a row. Syrian civilians seek refuge in Israel and some Israeli shoes are making a big fashion statement in Japan. I'm Natasha Kirchuk here with the latest news in Israel. The recent wave of terror is raging on in Israel, and this morning alone, three attacks were attempted by Palestinian terrorists. Luckily, no Israelis were hurt. Israeli soldiers shot and killed a Palestinian terrorist after he tried to stab them near the West Bank city of Nablus. Just hours before, soldiers also arrested a 14-year-old Palestinian teen who attempted to stab them in the Hebron Hills, and there were no injuries. In the first attack of the day, Israeli police arrested a 17-year-old Palestinian girl near Ariel, who they say was carrying a knife and planning to carry out a stabbing attack. Today's attacks show a concentrated effort by the IDF to arrest terrorists that don't pose immediate danger. The IDF has consistently backed up its soldiers for killing terrorists, saying they are defending Israeli lives and using their best judgment. Yet IDF Chief of Staff Gadi Eisenkot also says that the IDF must use good judgment and the appropriate amount of force when responding to terrorists. Israeli Defense Minister Moshe Yalon is also supporting the IDF's push for restraint, saying Israel must remember its core values even in the face of Palestinian terrorism. It looks like Israel and the Palestinian Authority are close to striking a deal to release a Palestinian hunger striker from Israeli custody. The Palestinian journalist Mohammed al kik has refused to eat food for over 88 days in protest of his detention. The 33-year-old journalist has been under administrative detention since November 21st for allegedly working with the Palestinian terror group Hamas. Al Kik denies any activity with Hamas and has refused food since November 25th in protest of his detention. His condition has rapidly been deteriorating, but he has refused to end his fast unless he's sent to a medical facility in the West Bank under Palestinian Authority jurisdiction. Al Kik is currently being treated at Emek Medical Center in northern Israel. Now it looks like Israel may be closing a deal with the PA to release the detained journalist in May. In the agreement, Israel is allegedly vowing not to place al kik in administrative detention in the future. The deal hasn't been confirmed yet, but Palestinian media is claiming it may be confirmed today. The Syrian civil war has been making headlines since it broke out almost five years ago. The Syrians who haven't left their homeland are still looking for a safe place to live, but it might surprise you to hear where they want to go. An American-Israeli businessman and a Syrian opposition figure have joined forces to push for a safe zone for displaced Syrians near the Israeli border. We like to be a good neighbor. We would like to increase humanitarian supply. We do think a safe zone next to the Israeli border is the right thing to do, and we will help you to achieve that goal. The organizers say there's a desperate need for an area where Syrian civilians can find shelter from the Syrian civil war. Israeli businessman Moti Kahana and Syrian opposition figure Kamal al Abwani are trying to influence Israel, the United Nations and the European Union to set up a safe zone where injured civilians can be treated. Organizers have already set up tents on the border between Syria and Israel and the Golan Heights. And it looks like they're already preparing for a potential surge of refugees in Israel. <laughs> בסופו של דבר אנשי סוריה, כאילו היה להם לאן לברוח, הגיעו לפה. בזמן האחרון המחנה גדל מאוד. זה המקום שבו האנשים יכולים לנהל את החיים שלהם רחוק מהמלחמה, כי פה אצלנו שקט. Israel has already brought hundreds of injured Syrians across the border for treatment since the start of the Syrian civil war. Israeli government officials are saying Israel isn't prepared to handle a significantly larger number of Syrian refugees which could become a problem if a safe zone is created. But Kahana and al Abwani say that despite the risks, Israel should do more to help Syrian civilians. The government of Israel get help through the borders, humanitarian help, and treat the injured people. But now we need more. We need to create inside Syria a safe zone, safe zone for uh, civilians who help them to have uh, 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 ability to rebuild their society. 
Meanwhile, one Syrian blogger already says that Israel is going above and beyond to help Syrian refugees. He's even created a website to thank the Israeli people. ILTV reporter Denise Wood has more on the story. Abu Dandachi is a Syrian blogger who has been displaced to Turkey. Dandachi is a Sunni Muslim and he has some pretty interesting things to say about Israel and the Arab nations. Dandachi claims the one thing he's taken away from the last five years is that Israel isn't the enemy and that the Jewish state is doing great things to help the Syrian people. The blogger says Israel isn't taking part in the Syrian war, but it's helping wounded Syrians instead of closing its northern border. He says Israelis are not only helping Syrians on the border, but also in Jordan, Greece, Serbia and North America. Dandachi criticizes many of the Arab states for closing their doors to the Syrian people, including the Sunni Gulf states. He says he's surprised that Israel didn't do the same. Dandachi says he was taught in Syrian schools to hate Israel, but now he thinks that Jews are the most humane and generous people in the area. Last December, Dandachi created a website called Thank You Am Israel to thank the Israeli people. He fills the site with stories of Jews and Israelis helping Syrians and says that since the Syrian people have no way to pay back the Israelis, the least they can do is say thank you. The Israeli performer Tanya Vinokur has been captivating audiences worldwide with her mesmerizing performances. She's a dancer, a singer, a drummer, and a violinist, and her multicultural music reflects just how much of a melting pot Israel truly is. Check out this video. So thank you so much for coming in, Tanya. Thank you for having me, Natasha. So you do so many different things. How do you define yourself professionally? Well, first of all, I see myself as an artist and a performer. And if you're asking me if I'm more of a violinist or a dancer, um, I think those are my tools and techniques to express myself and actually a way to reach the hearts of my audience and listeners. Absolutely. And so your art is a fusion of several different styles and cultures. Right. How do you find this inspiration? Where does it come from? Well, traveling, collaborating with artists from all around the world. I started touring when I was 14 years old. And since then, I've collaborated with um, uh, Cuban musicians, uh, jazz musicians, um, uh, orchestras, theater, ballet troops. You know, this is my inspiration, people people and travels yes definitely absolutely and so you perform a lot abroad as well and do you feel that when you perform abroad do you represent israel in any way of course i do i mean i'm not um going with the israeli flags and posters you know but when i'm asked and interviewed about that of course i'm very proud of that and this is why i also decided recently to base myself again here in israel because i also my inspiration is here i mean this is where i write my music this is where I do my choreographies, and this is where it all starts. And I take it with me to um, all over the world. So in some senses, you could say that your music is actually a reflection of the country itself. Right. I think um, the fusion happens here, everywhere you look. I mean, it's in food, in fashion, in music. You know, most of the, um, the great world music is coming from Israel. Um, and uh, yeah, actually my new single is talking about that. It's called Jaffa and uh, I shot the video in Jaffa. And um, the main melody is more of oriental with classical technique, you know, on, on electronic sound and groove. And um, I think this is Israel for me, uh, the fusion of everything. Um, yeah. Yeah, and I could just hear the music and I already love this. <laughs> Thank um, you. So, okay, you also came to Israel um, at eight years old from Moldova. Right. You immigrated here. You were uh, Ola Hadasha. I and was Ola Hadasha. <laughs> you, you were, I guess, yeah, it, it ends after seven years or something, I think, yeah. at this point. But, um, you know, how do you, how do you think this experience has, has actually contributed to your success today? And what would you tell other artists that are considering coming to this country and pursuing music? Well, um, I would say dream big and then work hard to get it. And then when you actually get it, dream even bigger. I mean, this, um, this experience was that for me. Because immigrating is not easy, especially when you're young, you know, and you have to learn a different language and the whole family needs to transform and find jobs and, you know, and, and everything that comes with that. And, um, but I think, um, working hard and aiming uh, for the right goal 
and just dreaming, you know, I think it, it will get you there. And it's not only about immigration, it's also about everything I did and you know, everything I dreamt of doing in my life. Like um, my shows and, and uh, collaborating with everybody, you know. Absolutely. So, so where can we see you perform next? That's a big question. Well, this week um, in Israel, I have a show in Jaffa. Um, and I'm actually going to celebrate my birthday in that show. Uh, it's going to be very big and, and a party show. And then in two weeks, I'm traveling to perform in Miami. Um, so uh, yeah, and right after that, my single is going to be out. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you so much. I guess I want to end this interview uh, with a little taste of the music that you're going to be performing. Sure. Can you show us something? I see yeah. this violin here. Um, I love the flower on the end Oh, as well. thank you. Um, I would play a tune uh, that I usually finish my shows with. Um, my electronic or acoustic shows. It's called Pampa because you actually can sing to it. Pampa, pam, pam, pam. Ah, okay. <laughs> so much for coming in, so Thank beautiful. You. Okay. The last survivor of Nazi Germany's Treblinka death camp has died. Samuel Willenberg passed away in Israel at the age of 93. The Poland-born survivor was only 16 at the start of World War II. When he was 19, he was rounded up with other Jews during the liquidation of the Apatow ghetto and sent by train to Treblinka. Upon his arrival at the camp, Willenberg passed himself off as a bricklayer and was the only person in his transport not to perish in the gas chambers. In 1943, he took part in a revolt at Treblinka and was among the few hundred who escaped. He made his way to Warsaw and joined the underground, where he later took part in the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising. After the Holocaust, Willenberg moved to Israel and found success as a sculptor. He will be buried tomorrow near Netanya and he leaves behind his wife, daughter and three grandchildren. The Israeli army is taking a big initiative to harness the skills of soldiers on the autism spectrum. The IDF is choosing to nurture and make use of their special abilities instead of excluding them from army service. The army program Seeing Into the Distance provides training and assistance to Israelis with autism who want to enlist. Until recently, most people on the autism spectrum were sidelined from the army. But the new program provides a framework to more easily transition into the IDF's rigid structure. Dozens of people have participated since 2013, undergoing a three-month training session that tests their skills and determines where they can serve in the Army. The program takes advantage of the participants' perceptive capabilities and knack for repetition to place them in the military's most elite and sensitive intelligence units. Once in the Army, the soldiers are accompanied by an occupational therapist and psychologist for extra support. Recruits on the autistic spectrum are only required to serve for one year, but they can volunteer for an additional two if they'd like. Either way, the program provides guidance once they leave the military. The Israeli footwear giant Teva is making waves in Japan for selling an entirely different model of their famous sandals. Teva's Velcro hiking shoes have been a big hit internationally, but the company has introduced some new clogs and they're taking over Tokyo. Teva has sold over 55,000 pairs of its iris clogs in the land of the rising sun, bringing in over $11 million. The heelless clogs are available in 13 colors, but honey brown is the most popular so far. So what's the secret behind their success? It turns out Teva's clogs are really similar to the slippers that traditional Japanese wear with kimonos. The shoes are being marketed in three different Japanese stores under the Naot brand for around 200 bucks a pair. Teva has been so successful so far that they're even opening two more stores in the next three years. The Israeli footwear manufacturer is based in Kibbutz Yad Mordechai and has been in business since 1984. And now for our Hebrew word of the day. All this talk about Tevas has us thinking about Israel's unique style, bringing us to the word Nal, which means shoe in Hebrew. Tevas Velcro sandals might have a dorky reputation internationally, but they happen to be the most famous shoes in Israel. And as you saw today, other countries are also getting a kick out of the brand. Don't worry if your Israeli roommate is running around the house yelling, Efo Nalaim Sheli. It means, where are my shoes? And she's probably just in a hurry to get out of the house. 
But if an Israeli calls you tipesh kbonal, you should be concerned. He's using the common Israeli phrase to say you're as stupid as a shoe, which means you don't have much going on upstairs. Israelis may consider shoes to be stupid, but they're super important when it comes to getting around Tel Aviv. You can travel pretty much anywhere in the city by foot. So make sure you bring a good pair of nalaim when you visit Israel, but leave some room in your suitcase for a stylish new pair of Israeli shoes. Let's go ahead and take a look at the weather forecast. It's the beginning of a new week. Monday is expected to be rainy with a high of 63 degrees. The rain should continue into Tuesday, but the temperature will go up to 65. All right, everybody, that's it for today's news. Today's exchange rate is 3.91 shekels to the American dollar. Remember to sign up for our daily newsletter at ILTV.TV, and don't forget to check out our evening update every night at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you tonight.